Bridgeport is Connecticut's largest city by population. It has a rich history filled with great stories and great people. But in the 21st century, it has experienced many of the problems that cities across the nation are facing. Our guests today are on the front lines of making sure that Bridgeport continues to tell great stories. Joining us today is Bridgeport City Council President Aiden Nieves and CEO of the Bridgeport Regional Business Council, Dan Onofrio. The Municipal Voice is the Connecticut Conference of Municipalities podcast in collaboration with WNHH 103.5 FM. I'm your host, Matt Ford. As always, be sure to give us a like and let us know what you're thinking in the comments below. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Happy to be here. So, first thing I want to talk about is uh, last week, the uh, National League of Cities was in Bridgeport for both the Women in Municipal Government and Hispanic elected local officials groups, subgroups of that national organization, which are both headed by uh, representatives from Bridgeport. AD, you are the second vice president for Hilo. Um, you just had the joint conference with the women's group in Bridgeport, uh, a lot of speakers. Can you tell us a little bit about NLC, the conference, and some of those speakers that we had here? Uh, well, we had a variety of speakers. We had, um, we actually had Lieutenant Governor Susan Weitzwitz came down mm -hmm. to speak on the census, uh, to give an understanding of where Connecticut is on the census. For the 2020 census. For the 2020 okay. census, and uh, where we are on our complete health task force. Um, as you may or may not know, Bridgeport was the first municipality to begin their complete Task so it's a group in the city government who's yes. focused on the census for 20 yes. months. So yes, yeah, so we had a, a long discussion with uh, Susan Bicewitz and a representative from um, the census, from the U.S. Census Office mm -hmm. Bureau, and then we had uh, a session, we had a segment on housing and the housing crisis in Connecticut, and we had our new um, commissioner, Celia Mesquera, who's from Hartford, and she came down and did a presentation to talk about the need of housing. We had uh, speakers from Habitat for Humanity. We had uh, a housing. We had someone from um, a local housing agency here, mm -hmm. uh, Homes for the Braves, to talk about the, the need for veteran housing. Great cause. Well. We've supported them in the past. Yes. Uh, Homes for the Braves was here, and then um, in uh, the women's uh, segment, they had a few speakers. They had the president uh, from the University of Bridgeport. She was one mm -hmm. of our speakers to talk about education and equality and women in government. Um, we also had a segment on the Me Too movement, mm -hmm. which that was also covered um, locally here with um, some community action groups right here in this. There's a lot of great local speakers, but we had attendees from across the country, right? We had attendees from across the country. We had the vice mayor from San Leandro, uh, California. All she right. came and she talked about smart cities. We had a councilman who they both lead in NLC, the uh, technology. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, public technology uh, committee, yeah, the group in public technology. Dave Mess, Dave, uh, David Luna from Mesa, Arizona, who's also the first VP of Hilo, he presented. Okay. And uh, we had a, a long discussion about how do we get um, urban centers up to the 21st century and, up together, and getting uh, smart technology in our infrastructure and what that means um, across the country. It's important stuff to us, say like Bridgeport. Yes, uh, and then we had uh, the second VP of he of uh, National League of Cities, Kathy Manis, was here, okay. um, both as a as a council member and the second VP, helping us out to talk about women in municipal government and what it looks like for women in leadership and moving up leadership to, to kind of inspire women in leadership to move forward in leadership roles. Um, and it was really good. It was it was inspiring. We had uh, council members from Newark. We had the vice mayor from. Um, Trenton, New Jersey here. We actually had the, from Camuy, Puerto Rico, we had a mayor. All the way from, all the way from right. Camuy, Puerto Rico with us. Wow. Yes. So That's a true. lot of different minds from different a lot of different, minds, different, different parts communities. of the country, but a lot of similar challenges. You a lot of similar challenges. And I think the biggest uh, conversation was the housing crisis. Mm -hmm. We all talked about equitable housing, fair housing, understanding what market rate housing means to yeah. people uh, who are representing communities that don't have a strong infrastructure right now and are working up on their, you know, rebuilding their economy being from factory manufacturing to what is the next level mm -hmm. to ensure that families um, have equitable housing. Yeah. So talk about manufacturing, um, we talked at the top show about Bridgeport's history and uh, a lot of the economic activity was centered on the harbor uh, and industrial sort of uh, businesses. 
Um, but as with Connecticut and a lot of the rest of the country, some of that industry has gone away in Bridgeport. Um, Dan, can you talk about Bridgeport now? What What does Bridgeport make now? What are the industries driving Bridgeport now and into the future? Yeah. Um, yeah, so as you mentioned, you know, manufacturing uh, is changing, right? Not just here in Bridgeport, mm-hmm. but throughout the country and, and specifically in Connecticut. Uh, so I'd say right now it's powering Bridgeport are three major service industries, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, healthcare, finance, uh, and education. So we have uh, obviously Bridgeport Hospital and St. Vincent's Medical mm-hmm. Center, which are probably, if not the two largest employers, I think, in, in, in Bridgeport. Um, People's Bank on the finance side is headquartered here. Mm-hmm. We're proud to have them here. Yeah, right, right uh, across the street. Right across the street, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and of course, University of Bridgeport and Santa Community College uh, are also not just a from an employment perspective, mm-hmm. but uh, what they what they do in terms of their program to generate talent um, for the area. So we've seen this shift towards service. Uh, you mentioned the harbor. Um, you know, I, I do think, and I can probably just speak more to this, but I do think uh, long term, you know, it's it, it, Bridgeport is going through this reinvention of trying to bring people back to the harbor. Yeah, uh, perhaps maybe it's uh, it, it makes use in the sense of work, live, play. Um, versus for a long time, it was strictly kind of industrial, industrial and yes. had that kind of reputation. But now they've got those developments going. There's, there's retail going in, right. all the ferry, all this other kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, the Post recently reported that there's a need for jobs in the city and residents uh, with one summer program receiving 600 applicants for 100 jobs. From the business side, what kind of businesses are you looking at to start settling in the area? Yeah, I, I think we like you know, since there's been this shift towards the service side of, uh, of industry, uh, you know, I think those are good jobs, good paying mm-hmm. jobs. Um, so if we can align the education goal programs coming not just at the higher ed uh, schools, but even at the at elementary level and beyond, get, get our kids and our youth uh, educated mm-hmm. around the soft skills and things that, um, Really are are in that are specialized within the service sector, so like training programs. Exactly, and like, exactly. Yeah. Give them that exposure, and you see programs like that where uh, we have six hundred applicants for a hundred opportunities yeah. this summer. Yeah, that's a good problem to have, right? Um, uh, it's unfortunate we couldn't fill them all, yeah. but, uh, but the interest I, level is the interest level is there. The talents here. Um, obviously, there's a willingness for people to learn and take advantage of these opportunities. Mm-hmm. So the more that the business council and, and the city can. Um, work together on connecting those opportunities with the talent that exists here to get them that that um, that exposure that the, the next generation needs, the next generation of workforce mm-hmm. needs uh, is a good thing. So that's cool. Yeah. Eighty uh, on the municipal side. Uh, what kind of businesses? Uh, what kind of jobs are Bridgeport residents looking for? Well, you just asked that we were just talking about jobs over at the PSCG um, event just now. PSCG. What, what's that? Um, um, the power, the power the plant, new power plant? the new power plant, right? Just coming online. Just today. coming online today. So we had our official ceremony today, and there we talked about the ready to work program, where mm-hmm. um, it's a training ability, it's a training program uh, powered by Career Resources through PSCG's Community Benefits Agreement. Um, so it's a partnership to, between the partnership, the, the city and the city, and the trade. So it's a uh, the trade and PSCG mm-hmm. decided that um, they come together to start a training program. And that was something that the BRBC prior to um, Dan coming on had um, helped um, bring together for the community. And that's job training and trades. And not just trades, but also what Dan talked about, about service industry. I think re-imaging the city right now means that we have to find our new niche besides the hospitals. The, um, being our main employer, we have to find service industry. And that's where I think the harm redevelopment is going to play an integral part in bringing more jobs. And especially for youth, that is going to be a place where they'll be able to make uh, a little bit of money and also mm-hmm. offset the need of what you know, offset the needs of the community to help also hire adults in our community. So that's what we're looking at as a municipality. Yeah. Um, you know, the governor recently signed off on the body for a new high school that's going to have advanced manufacturing. And I think Dan and I we've talked about this. What is the next step once the advanced mm-hmm. manufacturing part? How do we get? How do we build that funnel from training? From school to jobs, yeah. it's not just college. It's about getting a trade or going into the service industry. And I think that's something. When uh, Dan became president, we had a brief conversation, and we keep talking about it. So we we're going to sit down and we're going to hash this out and make sure we can partner to create a synergy for the city to start creating like a track 
a, a job strap for our youth and for our residents and for the adults. So good paying jobs and good Bridgeport, jobs. Bridgeport residents coming into those jobs. Yeah, I think the reality is, you know, the jobs are there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a little bit of a disconnect with with getting the um, the talent that we're producing. Yeah, is that, is, is that even more pronounced with some of the trades and the more technical things that there is yeah, I think jobs that but not necessarily people that are trained exactly. in the area. Exactly. Like because manufacturing and all those things are changing so rapidly. So the technology changes. So if we can continue to evolve and have the right people around the table from uh, you know the universities to the Sikorskis to mm -hmm. to the PSEGs, um, you know, these are great blueprints of uh, of opportunity there, so we tweak and adjust the, the STEM education, as you know, is, is, is the buzzword now um, that we're producing in, in the region to keep those kids uh, uh, here in, in, in Bridgeport uh, and, and fill that, that, that pipeline of opportunities that exist. Uh, and I, you'll hear some, some more stuff uh, coming out of Bridgeport in the months to come, but there's this whole idea of, of creating this ecosystem, the STEM ecosystem for the city. Um, yeah. And, and it's, it's not just about training local people to get the job, but it's also about attracting businesses to the area, right? Because if there's the, the people with the skills here, they're more likely to want to relocate to Bridgeport. That's right. So we create both ways for, for the businesses to find what they need and for people to find jobs. Correct. Um, we know that a lot of the recovery from the last recession uh, has hit states differently, and in some ways it feels like Connecticut didn't. Uh, get hasn't caught up in the way some other areas uh, have, um, but that doesn't mean the cities aren't trying to figure out how to develop and how to bring that money back in. Um, we have areas like Hartford, uh, the Dunkin' Donuts Park, uh, New Haven's been really concentrated downtown, and you mentioned before the harbor area. Um, can you talk about Edie? Can you talk about Bridgeport's kind of grand plans for the harbor area, like where they see that going in the future? I mean, initially when when the Steel Point concept um, came up um, with Bridgeport Land Development, it was to build um, a entertainment area. Mm -hmm. uh, this the, is the area of the harbor across the harbor. from kind of downtown. Yep, this is the harbor that you can see uh, when you're on 95, where you see the Bass Pro Shop, which is the front of the water. Mm -hmm. You can see the slips there for the boats for the dock um, that's been created. There's going to be more slips put out there. So next year that will be fully online. Um, okay. The restaurant has now opened, so there is a little bit of entertainment there where you can go to Boca Restaurant, which is located right, right on the water. water. And so yep. the docks are there for, is that for, for people with their own boats? For like their own pleasure boats, boats to yep, come in and go to come in and dock. And eventually, uh, once they start developing the rest of the harbor, because mm -hmm. um, they're on phase two now, what we call phase two, because the restaurant is open, the mm -hmm. roadway is done, most of the underground infrastructure has been completed. Okay. So now it's about building up. And building up is ensuring that we, we talked about having a hotel on there, which Bridgeport mm -hmm. Land Development is going to be betting whatever hotel chain decides to build there um, to kind of create a destination yeah. on the water on the harbor. I mean, we kind of been talking about emulating what we've seen at Baltimore National Harbor. Okay. So something like that to see that in Bridgeport because this is one of the uh, one of the only I think non-developed harbors around the northeast okay, a, the a, large a large area of land to start fresh with yes so it's, it's really fresh in the landscape it's kind of fresh and i know we've talked about the casino mm -hmm. but besides the casino we've talked about reinventing bridgeport's image of maybe on the water being a little bit more entertainment family yeah. friendly um to have uh shops on the bottom so it's mixed use there's going to be apartments on top shops on the bottom there'll be apartments there'll be shopping yeah restaurants um, now there was the the ball field over there is also being The ball field. And then um, to the south of us right here, Live Nation, the ball field is being demolished to bring in Live Nation to the amphitheater. Live Nation to an amphitheater, so concerts. So, concerts. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and it's talking about bringing the traffic throughout the harbor, through one side of the harbor, which mm -hmm. where uh, the ball field is currently um, being demolished and is being rebuilt for the amphitheater. There's the arena, which is also entertainment. So we have Boca, which mm -hmm. is on the water restaurants, and we have that entertainment kind of create that traffic throughout Bridgeport and bringing that into the downtown area and ensuring that we have a you know, lively. So is, is that part of what you're looking at is how to not only get the people there, but then have the flow of traffic kind of lead to downtown businesses? Yep, lead to downtown in other, in other ways and into the city as well. 
question. Yeah, what's got you and the business community excited about the harbor? Yeah, of course. You know, look, uh, being the largest city in the state of Connecticut, uh, we've got the transportation hub here. And we've got uh, the ferry, we've got the train. Exactly. It's all right there. You know, so if we can continue to efficiently move people in and out and throughout mm-hmm. the city, uh, and make it easy, as easy as possible, people will come. And to piggyback and, and echo what Ivy said, and, you know, a lot of it is marketing and messaging too. Um, and, you know, I often say this, maybe I shouldn't, but, you know, the Connecticut Post and the Channel 12 News, those folks aren't going to really share the, the good news stories, right? Mm-hmm. There's a lot of really good things happening in Bridgeport, um, whether you're talking about business or you're talking about PT Barnum and you're talking about this stuff going on at the amphitheater. There's a lot of happening. So, um, working in partnership with the city, uh, the BRBC, we want to continue to try to 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 be that marketing engine for the region. The spokesperson, the, exactly. You know, who better than us than the chambers? You know, the chambers of commerce uh, that bring that community um, and get them connected uh, uh, with businesses, but also with all the other wonderful things that are happening in the region. So, I'm excited about the developments that's happening here. You know, Boca, uh, as Ivy mentioned, just opened up. Um, you know that uh, it is going to be. It will be a full service marina. Yeah. Um, so those docks are not just for pleasure boats. There's boat works right across the way there um, that's servicing huge yachts, uh, and I see them coming so, so and going. That's jobs. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So it's uh, uh, you know it's an exciting time to be part of this re- reinvention of Bridgeport, especially here downtown uh, along yeah. the waterline. Yeah. And so the big part of the challenge is not just redeveloping Bridgeport. But also letting the world know about the stuff that's already here. Exactly. You know, re- rebranding. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And there's yeah. We, we just need to be smarter about it. Uh, you know, when that when those people are coming off the, the ferry, uh, or coming off the yeah. train station, is making sure that we have the right um, opportunities for them to, to, to venture into downtown. Because even when downtown, they're stepping off, capturing them right then, and like you don't need to then exactly. go off to wherever from exactly. the station. You can exactly walk to. Yeah. And there's a lot of exciting things happening right here on Main Street. Yeah. Uh, there's been uh, as quite a few redevelopments uh, along Main Street here with the retail uh, component, uh, a little bit of a mixed use, and uh, there, there, there's some exciting things happening there. That's great. Um, so all summer, uh, CCM Communications, we've been working with our intern on a parks project. Where we've been exploring uh, municipal parks across the state, and uh, really one of the gems of Bridgeport is Seaside Park. Um, what role do you see uh, parks playing in Bridgeport's future? Um, as I touched on before, we have Bearsley Park, which is the is where the Connecticut Zoo is located. Mm-hmm. So, um, and then we have Seaside Park, which is the other, which is our beach area, and it has yeah. one of the longest stretches of beach um, right here. Yeah, it's, it's a big park. It is a very big park. Yeah. Um, and one of the things is that one of our councilwomen has made, made it her task kind of help us with the Perry Arches because it is designed as Homestead Park, mm-hmm. designed, um, the one who designed Central Park. Yep. So uh, that, is one of, yeah, yeah. that is one of the things that a lot of people don't realize, but when they hear it, they're like, yeah. oh, wow, I've got to go to Seaside Park. And yeah. the city's invested a lot of money into doing the ball fields, into making sure that the beach, putting more cables out, making it family friendly. Mm-hmm. And I think one of the things is when we have Live Nation go up, and we have individuals who stay here at the Holiday Inn in downtown mm-hmm. is to bring them down to Seaside Park and, and create a, kind of like a weekly um, events that happens during mm-hmm. the summer to get people there, which we have in, I think July is the busy, busiest month for Seaside yeah. Park. Between the end of June and July, we have Barnum Festival events happening in the parks. And it's about marketing and getting the families there to, to spend time there because uh, it's right in front of UB. So actually when families come and visit, mm-hmm. To, to see the university, they're, they're seeing what it is the park has to offer. So it's about marketing as both with the university yeah. and as a whole to the downtown area to create that traffic. Yeah. Back. And that sounds like an amazing asset. And to, to, and to Bearsley Park, which the zoo is in, and um, the zoo really does a great job of uh, its own self-marketing throughout the city, mm-hmm. but uh, getting people up to Bearsley Zoo, which is another which is another gem that we have. So, so Bearsley on its own is doing a lot of the kind of marketing that mm-hmm. some of these others Things town yeah. can follow that example, yeah. like Seaside Park. Mm-hmm. Um, so you're t- there's talk about we're getting concerts and stuff there in the future. Is that kind of the so we have tradition? a band show mm-hmm. and we have a lot of community events that happen there yeah. and that are pretty big. Like uh, we have a Columbia Festival. We have um, 
I think the Jerk Fest was thinking about using it, um, the annual Jerk Festival, which has been going on for 10 plus years. So a lot of people are starting to utilize the park for their festivals. But we also utilize it within the Green Park, which is uh, where we do our Downtown Thursday event. So what we're trying right to, in the heart. Just right, right, right in the heart, right here. Okay. Every Thursday in Downtown, there's about six weeks. And they host events, and that's another park that's been utilized by the communities, and it is a marketable kind of yeah. park, in a sense, that um, is bringing, attracting outside people to come into the city and spend their time. And that's another, not just for residents, but also get the people come in. Yep. Mm -hmm. You got Fairfield County you're right on the, the Metro North line there. They can stop off on their way home. Yep. They can... So, yeah, and, and it's ideal, like uh, Dan just said, it's McLeavy Green right in the center of downtown. Yeah. You can get off the ferry, you can hear the music, you can come on in. There's restaurants, there's a stress factory that we have there, which is entertainment wise. And then we have the stress the, factory. Uh, it's a comedy, comedy club. club. Okay. It's a comedy club. And then we have the German Beer Hall, um, which is another restaurant that is there. And then we have a uh, Ruff Richie's, which is on the main street. And we just opened up. Maybe about a month ago, Carrio People of Art, which is right here on Main Street as well. So, so there's, there's a, a there's full night entertainment we have there's right a there. There's synergy going around, and I think everything that's opened up so far has been strategic that it's bringing traffic to different sides of the downtown and throughout the city, which is good. I'm um, out of the McLeavy Green Park, so people yeah. are just like dispersing to go, oh, let me go to the karaoke, let me go to Rock and Richards at dinner, or you know, to the beer hall yeah. or to Stress Factory. This is important. It's an important thing because. You know, the next generation, uh, these urban centers need a mm -hmm. renaissance of some, yeah. some sort, right? And the next generation, they want to be in places that there's stuff happening. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of stuff happening here in Bridgeport, and there's a lot more that's going to be happening here in Bridgeport. Mm -hmm. So if we can create that right housing mix that I alluded to earlier, that's very significant. Yeah. Because then you'll get the, you know, the folks who maybe can't afford to be in Manhattan or uh, in Westchester County, uh, up here in the Bridgeport, you got the train line that can get you to Stanford and Norwalk and, and, and further south mm -hmm. uh, to get to their jobs. Uh, uh, or, better yet, you know, maybe there's that reverse commute uh, mm -hmm. up here, which I think is really what we're after, is getting people coming in the opposite direction uh, and, 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 and come to, the, to Bridgeport not just as a destination, but also as a home uh, yes. where you live and work. Live and work. Yeah. Yes. And there's a there's a big movement I think with that especially with the, you mentioned younger generation coming in of not wanting the suburban kind of commute they want to be somewhere they can walk to their jobs to the market mm -hmm. to all that kind of stuff. Um, a touched on some stuff going in the parks with the arts. How does the business community kind of view the parks and the arts? Yes, yeah, so as they they draw. This was a cultural thing for me. So I'm not originally from Bridgeport, right? Um, I'm not far from here, up, up in the valley, but when I came here, I didn't realize how thriving the arts community mm -hmm. is here. There is a wonderful and beautiful arts community in Bridgeport. Um, another one of those gems that I think we just don't project uh, yeah. well enough or strong enough or loud enough. Um, but it's significant because, like I said, you know, the, the, these urban centers, uh, it's important to have activity and whether you can have it through the arts through music and through uh, the creative side, but also these these parks mm -hmm. are, you know, people want places where they can go and have a picnic or take their kids for a run and, and play soccer or whatever yeah. it may be. So, uh, uh, you know, Bridgeport has that mix. Uh, now it's just a matter of capitalizing on it, I think, and taking advantage of evolving, evolving the city, especially downtown, uh, into the, what, what, will, what will thrive for the next hundred years. You are listening to the Municipal Voice on WNHH LP 103.5 FM New Haven. Um, before AD talked a little bit about the amphitheater coming in, um, a lot of big people have come through in the past, the Bridgeport, uh, Bob Dylan, Neil Young, lots more. It's going to be a big new concert venue. Um, what do you think the effect of a concert venue like that would be for businesses? Yeah, yeah, it's a great opportunity for both large and small, uh, right? Anytime you're bringing people and congregating people into, into an area or community, um, you know, it adds value in some way or another. So if we can be smart, again, as we mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. about once people are here, getting them to, to stay here for a little mm -hmm. while, um, or, or, you know, before the show, go out to dinner at Avukela on Fairfield Avenue or Ralph and Richie's yeah. or one of these other restaurants that are opening up, soon to be uh, another brew, brewery in, in downtown. Another one, uh, okay. Yes. It's already uh, a brewery. Uh, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, um, yeah, the more we can do 
that mm-hmm. uh, I, I, is, is a good thing, right? Uh, and, then, and then is that kind of part of your role is to, yeah. to reach out to the, get those people who are coming in to go see the concert, yeah. to let them know that when they get up to transportation, they, they see that yeah. sign, the posters, the whatever, the exactly. marketing that exactly. Bridgeport yeah, this, this it, one exactly. I think you know a, a key function of the BRBC, the Bridgeport Regional Business Council, is working with the municipality in a lot of mm-hmm. ways, um, as well as the Downtown Merchants Association right here, uh, Downtown Bridgeport, uh, and bringing the businesses together mm-hmm. too. Right. So this is the power of the, of the BRBC is you have the stress factory, these restaurants and Bridgeport and all these uh, retail outlets, and you know they're busy man in the show, the, the store, right. Mm-hmm. Like, you don't have the time necessarily to go um, to the meetings and to advocate for yeah. what would help their businesses. So we, you know, we try to get those people around the, uh, the table, to try to percolate the issues that are driving uh, that driving their business mm-hmm. needs, uh, and then we can be that conduit for them and with them with the city, so that we can, you know, perhaps get some wayward signing uh, throughout the city uh, uh, and some other activities here. Yeah. One of the things that I remember with the arena, this is in the early days, and hopefully it will, will continue to evolve this, but you know, when there was an event, whether it's the Sound Tigers or a mm-hmm. concert, and it would be the same with the amphitheater, you know, the police department, no fault of their own, but they would bl- almost block traffic from entering into downtown. They wanted you to get on the highway, off the highway. Yeah. And their mindset is, let's just alleviate traffic. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Traffic, let's get on the as fast as possible. We want to actually create a pathway yeah. for people to venture into downtown. I mean, yeah. there's another way. Um, and so it's having those conversations and a productive dialogue mm-hmm. to, to, to help the business community here in downtown when uh, Bob Dylan or whoever's coming mm-hmm. to the amphitheater next year. Uh, so so those are the things that we look forward to, to continue to talk about. And get people, get uh, people around, come up with good exactly. creative ideas exactly. on how to, how to market on this exactly. coming in. Um, Dan was talking about you know the, the importance of Change the city in ways that will attract the next generation. Maybe, um, how how far in the future, when the city is planning, like talking about redoing the harbor and exists, but how how far in the future are you looking? Um, well, I personally have have had this conversation with my council members about we need to think about the impact and the decisions we make now. Yeah. How is that going to affect the next five to ten years of reinvigorating our city? Every project that we say yes to, every um, proposal that comes before us is going to impact what our city is going to look like. And we can't shy away from making those kind of hard decisions where yeah. we say, do we really want this in our city or we really need to have that conversation? We need this in our city because in five years, um, people are going to be looking for a new place to move, affordability. And we are an affordable part of the community, but we also... Yeah. And, you know, in Fairfield County, we're pretty affordable because people are yeah. moving from Stanford area, from the New York area. So we need to start looking how to keep those families here and mm-hmm. building their families out in the state we're traveling. I'm second generation, and the thing that has kept me here yeah. is um, I can work and live in my city, and it's affordable for me. Yeah. And ensuring that that is, what, that is the uh, top, top issue that we've talked mm-hmm. about and making sure that the city makes decisions that we can bring real jobs, sustainable jobs, where people can live and work in the city and don't have to work second jobs. So not so, being shy about when they're picking and saying, if someone comes in, not to make the first thing that comes in, just yeah. grabbing it and being like, is this good now? Is this good 10 years from now? Is this where we, we want to head 20 yeah. years from now? Yeah. I mean, I think uh, like uh, people have said, oh, manufacturing is dying out, but advanced manufacturing is not dying out. Mm-hmm. We need to look at how do we uh, revamp some of our old buildings, which we have a couple of in small industrial centers, mm-hmm. which have smaller companies inside of there. We we really building out on that because that's where we are. Do we look at um, you know the biomedical? Do we get Yale mm-hmm. to invest in creating a medical park down here? You know how do we get these things to happen yeah. that that can create sustainable jobs and we can train our, our residents in the future to be able to work here and do the jobs that we can possibly offer them because we yeah. can't get. Um, you know, STEM STEM jobs when our when our infrastructure and our schools doesn't meet the need yeah. coming out of our schools, and I think that's something that Dan spoke about before STEM education and bringing those kind of jobs. Mm-hmm. How do we create that segue? And that's something that as council president, I've always talked to the council about. Um, I envision a need for that because 
I've gone up to uh, Worcester, Mass, and I've seen how that city is transforming itself in that whole area yeah. with STEM jobs and recreating its industry and repurposing the city. Now, is part of that, I, mean, I don't know what the situation is with high speeds around here, but is connectivity and like having 4G or 5G, like those sort of issues, is that important to businesses, especially when you're talking about STEM, having the infrastructure here already? Yeah, and I, you know, of course, obviously, connectivity is, is a big deal. Yeah. I think Bridgeport is pretty, we have a pretty decent uh, yeah. um, fiber coming. So it's already kind of well yes. positioned yes. to get yes. some of those. Yeah, now it's just a matter of figuring out them. the appropriate way to disseminate it throughout uh, the appropriate uh, yeah. facilities and business you know, uh, buildings uh, yeah. throughout the city, which I do move to before. Yeah, we were talking about is the advanced manufacturing. What are, what are some of those actual jobs? Like, what, what are those industries? Biomedical was one. What are some of the other? Well, I think you know having Sikorsky right up the road is mm-hmm. uh, you know anything in aerospace engineering. Uh, you know those those type of uh, programs are, are significant as well. Yeah. Um, and we alluded to before the trades. I mean, you know, gosh, you know, manufacturing. You know, as a generic term, you know, people just cover so much, especially yeah. the older generation. We automatically assume you know dark digits, factories. Right. Well, yeah, that's the other it's part. not like, like that. that. It's not like making that. better paying jobs, exactly. but like also yeah. a lot of the industries we're talking about are cleaner. We're not talking yeah. about exactly. polluting kind exactly. of industries. We're talking about smaller, more clean jobs. Yeah. Clean jobs. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, and I, I think that's part of it. You know, there's this opportunity for uh, kids to get exposed to these you know, science, technology, uh, math, and, and the arts uh, yeah. and engineering um, much earlier. So this way they get exposed to the skills that, that are required for those type of, uh, of opportunities that yeah. exist. Um, and it's, it's just different now. Uh, you know, so the more we can expose the next generation to, to, to those type of technologies, and, uh, you know, the better off we'll be. Awesome. Uh, back to Amy, uh, there's been some talk, a lot of speculation around about the casino. Um, you talk a little bit about where that stands and uh, let listeners know a little bit more of the background that they might not know about what's going on there? Um, well, from last I heard from my, one of my state reps, uh, it's kind of a, a conversation that's happening. I, when I saw the governor at the end of the session, they would talk about the tribes, they would talk about putting the, the bill was going to come out of committee. Mm-hmm. Um, there's, there's so many rumors, but the residents here in Bridgeport really want to see something happen. Um, whether it's the tribes that, that build here or MGM, it's about sustainability. How are we going to sustain that industry and, and the jobs mm-hmm. right, for the residents? I mean, we want to be the entertainment hub of Fairfield County. Um, we have accessibility, water, rail, um, and highway. But how do we sustain that if, if we don't get the casino? Mm-hmm. So we have to think of the next plan, but I, I personally want to see a casino because that will bring another yeah. level of entertainment and another level of traffic. Um, do I believe that the casino will be the magic pill for the city of Bridgeport? Um, yeah. No, it, it has it has to happen in multi layers. But from where we stand right now, the casino is kind of stagnant. Mm-hmm. I really, you know, everybody's out of session now, so it's going to come up again. And my hopes is, is that the Bridgeport delegation will make the push to push the governor and we uh, and the municipality are going to try and push push our state reps to have their backing on pushing this forward. And it's really about getting uh, lower Fairfield County where we've, we've gotten a lot of pushback mm-hmm. from some of those municipalities who don't want the traffic, who complain about the traffic that's going to occur coming to Bridgeport because, you know, we build a casino, which I don't know. Yeah, so, look, so this session was pretty frustrating as it related to the casino. And I like to always refer to it as a resort casino Mm -hmm. because I think that's ultimately really what Bridgeport needs and wants. Um, We don't don't want a slot show. I don't think anybody would have it. It's it's also shows, it's dining. Exactly, exactly. It's an experience and and it echoes and really fits in nicely with the conversation we've had earlier about Bridgeport being a destination. Mm-hmm. It complements the arena, it complements the amphitheater. Um, it's just another place for people to go and congregate right on the water. Yeah. Um, and the biggest thing for me, and 
that's used a little bit of a sour taste in my mouth on how the session ended, it is the jobs. Uh, you know, we talked a little bit about before the shift that we've seen in Bridgeport to the more service oriented mm -hmm. roles. Um, what the what the casino plan uh, uh, that was proposed um, wouldn't have been the silver bullet to fix mm -hmm. all our problems. But gosh, when you have a, a, a private organization looking to invest 500 million of their own dollars, yeah. they're asking for a penny. Uh, contributing a ton of tax revenue, not just to the city, but to the state, but more importantly, uh, virtually guaranteeing uh, thousands of jobs. Yeah. Uh, and these are well-paying jobs. These are service industry jobs uh, with benefits yeah. uh, that you can transfer to anywhere. Uh, you know, how do you say no? That triangle, and I referred to the, to the case study that we, that, that we did, but that, uh, that we had exposure to, mm -hmm. um, you know, that triangle from Waterbury to Bridgeport to New Haven represents 20% of the unemployment in Connecticut. Um, again, this would not have solved that problem, but gosh, it certainly would have helped. It's a nice day. Um, but it would have been a really tremendous shot in the arm um, to Bridgeport and the greater mm -hmm. Bridgeport region on multiple levels. Um, so I'm, I'm hopeful that the governor I'm hopeful that the Bridgeport delegation can stick together on mm -hmm. this issue. Um, it is an important one. Again, it doesn't solve all our problems, yeah. but it certainly helps a lot. So it, it says both well, ways. You, you want to see it happen, it, it would be great, but it's, it's not the be all end all. And you have plans B, plan B already working on that. If it doesn't happen, you're not putting all your eggs just in that, that basket. I think the plan B aspect is when we talk about a plan B, it's not just for that thing. It's about really focusing on the plan B is like how to keep the moving the city yeah. moving forward the municipality. And that is a conversation that um, has happened uh, with the council people who represent that district and, and yeah. uh, the steel point development is part of my district and we can't just focus on just everything on steel point. The casino is yeah. a big part of it, the entertainment part. We want to reach yeah. what we want to be known as the entertainment hub of Fairfield County. But um the rest of the city has to continue to move, and that's the plan yeah. B. It's still moving forward, working with the BRBC, working with businesses that want to come in and offer other different types of entertainment so we can start creating a different type of clubs. And hopefully, that will put a lot of pressure to make yeah. sure that that project can happen, to make sure that that, that we continue to build yeah. on Steel Point, continue to build on our entertainment um, identity. And the casino could be a big part of that, but yes. one way or the other, Bridgeport is moving forward. Yes. Got a good future ahead of it. Um, sort of the, the final question, and we'll start with 80 on this one. Um, what does Bridgeport need? Um, in general, what would make Bridgeport residents, maybe you ask Bridgeport residents, happy if you got it? Um, and as a follow up to what does Bridgeport need, how do you get it? Um, I think what, Brid what Bridgeport needs, and, and we're talking about that, is is a strong revitalization between, um, like we've been talking about, about the arts, about housing. Mm -hmm. We need quality housing. We need uh, to re image our city. Mm -hmm. And I think to, to a dance book about the Connecticut Post and News 12 doesn't help us re image our city. They're just giving up the news. So it's really about the rebranding of our yeah. community, the rebranding of, um, of all the attractions that we have. The, thing, the services we have to offer mm -hmm. and what is more to come. And it's reconnecting the neighborhoods to each other to create um, a better flow and understanding of what the city mm -hmm. is. We have Black Rock, um, which has it's, it's a small entertainment area. Yep. It's about connecting Black Rock to downtown like to create that roundabout yeah. traffic, to create, and then to create the traffic to, you know, up north to, up north Main Street to where mm -hmm. there's nicer restaurants to, to Connecticut, you know, to Connecticut Zoo, to mm -hmm. Pleasure Beach Island, down to, to Seaside Park, it's about that connectivity. And when we have it, yeah. and the casino comes, the casino resort or the resort comes, or an entertainment facility mm -hmm. is built on the harbor, we'll have it. We'll feel like we finally accomplished yeah. it. And then the second part to that is, you know, hopefully the governor and the delegation can work really hard on the second train station and mm -hmm. create that other transportation vibe here at the Barnum Station. Like, we had talked about with the previous administration with Governor yeah. Malloy. And then I think Bridgeport residents will feel like we've gotten somewhere, we've got it. Yeah. They're seeing it in small segments, but we're not going to feel it until we see something big and massive. Yeah. So when uh, the amphitheater is done, they're going to feel, okay, we're getting closer, we're getting mm -hmm. closer. 
So it's about this, yeah. you know, having the long game vision. Long vision. And then you talked about, we did talk a lot about the harbor and the casino, but you mentioned Black Rock and the north end of Maine. There's already all these great things here. And so it sounds like part of, of what you're looking for towards the future is actually stitching all those separate elements together, together so that people don't just do one part of it. They, they see it as a, as a complete whole. Mm-hmm. That's great. Yes. Dan, what's, what's, what does Bridgeport need in the future, and how do you get there? Uh, yeah, so I, I, similar to ID, it's a two-part answer I got for you. Um, one is, you know, it's a more fundamental as it relates to businesses. It's really, you know, making Bridgeport and the greater Bridgeport region just easier to do business in. Okay. You know, part of that is with taxes, right? Obviously, if we can increase the tax roll, uh, the, the, you know, it'll help everybody mm-hmm. in the long run, right? It'll keep taxes at a, at, in check, so it's easier to do business here. Um, you know, how do you do that is, is tough. And one area that we're looking to, to help hopefully foster dialogue is uh, from the business recruitment retention side. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's these site selector shows that happen throughout the country. And Connecticut in general doesn't really have a, a strong presence. I mean, we're there, yeah. uh, but you know, who is Connecticut? Who are we? Yeah. Um, you know, yes, the defense industry is a big part of who we are, but you know, Hartford's different than Bridgeport, Bridgeport's different than New Haven uh, and Stanford. And so what we're looking to do with the, uh, we call it uh, this network of metro chambers. So mm-hmm. we have the major uh, metro areas of Connecticut uh, we're just looking to work together a little bit more closely because I can't get to all the site selector shows. My colleague up at Harvard yeah. can't as well. So, but we can help each other out, right? Well, we, we benefit one part of connection. Exactly. Right? So yeah. we're looking to do more about, and this kind of leads into the second part of of my answer. And, mm-hmm. and again, to echo I think what we said multiple times is really branding and marketing and messaging who Bridgeport is and the opportunities yeah. that exist here, not just from a community perspective but for business yeah. and here's a very small example um, not to take too much time but um, and I, I mentioned this at our annual lunch uh, that happened earlier in June but you know our office receives calls all day long from businesses you know whether it's just a general resource question or or uh, you know to how do I get financing and stuff but we had a, 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 a someone that looking to relocate their their small chip Manufacturing, mm-hmm. I say chip, but tortilla chips basically, but they're a Polish delicatessen. It uh, makes chips. Yeah, that makes right. chips. And they, they manufacture these things out in uh, in Newark, New Jersey, and they're expanding and they outgrew mm-hmm. their space. Um, being originally from Connecticut, the gentleman said, Yeah, you know, what's in Bridgeport? And you know, who better than us to help match up the right opportunities for that particular business? Yeah. And they relocated here and they just signed their lease uh, not too long ago over on Union uh, Avenue there. and. Um, you know, it's a great story, but that it, it, it's not the big business. It's not the Amazon, mm-hmm. right? That we would love to have, but it, it, you know, those opportunities exist, yeah. and who better us to kind of have that inventory and be able to speak intelligently to 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 businesses on hey, what opportunities exist here to be that advocate for Bridgeport, yeah. the Greater Bridgeport region. That's why I'm excited to be here. That's why I'm excited to be working with the city, um, and I think the more we can do of that sort of thing, the better off we'll be in the long run. Um, you know, but that, that example, you know, it's, it, he's bringing 20 jobs here, uh, you know, it's yeah. rich for within the first year of this growth plan matches up, it's 40 new jobs in the next three years, you know? So it's a great story. Mm-hmm. So we, I want that story 20 times over, you know, a hundred times over. Yeah. The, the Amazon wants to move and makes national news, but there's yeah. these small yes. to mid-sized companies everywhere that yes. could benefit yes from being in the right size right. and we need to continue to tell their that. stories that's yeah. that's the the, yes. the missing piece right now i feel you know we have a bit of this self-fulfilling prophecy of well it's bridgeport you know like, yeah, you know, know, it's bridgeport yeah, yeah when yeah. some people yeah. say bridgeport you're like uh, no yeah. it's bridgeport it's you know, we've got stuff going on it, uh, it's the place you know? and yeah. so the more we can do of that people the the just naturally, the mindset will start to shift, and it'll take time. It won't happen overnight, but gosh, uh, there's a lot of really good things happening. And, and I think the more we tell that story, the more our youth gets excited about. Yes, you know, I am from Bridgeport. I'm proud to be from Bridgeport. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I, you know, so I'm, I, it, it's not going to be easy, but it, it's one of those things where it's a good challenge. I think it's it, it's a, there's a good story to tell here. 
uh, and we just need to do it better than we have. Great. Well, I'd like to thank our guests, Aiden Nieves and Dan Onofrio, for being here. The Musical Voice is a co-production by CCM and WNHH 103.5 FM. Kevin Maloney is our executive producer, Christopher Gilson is our producer, Harry Draws is on the boards, and I'm Matt Ford, your host. Be sure to check us out on Facebook Live and give us a like. Watch out for CCM Chat Series on YouTube. See you next time.